Hello to the world and to the kingdom citizens. I greet you in the precious holy name of Yeshua Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who said in his word, John 8 and 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hi, I'm Dr. John Curry, ambassador, Pan-African, and welcome to the embassy of the kingdom of heaven on earth. If you want to follow this podcast, please subscribe to JC Global Embassy TV One. This message is for black people in particular. I want you to know as black people, we are the most brilliant. We are the most excellent. We are the most creative. And yes, we are the most resilient. I believe this will clear it all up as you take a peek at this clip, and I believe it will bless you. So let us take a peek at this clip. Race science or scientific racism is the belief that race and intelligence are linked, leading to disparities in social outcomes such as life expectancy, education, wealth, and imprisonment rates. Race scientists argue that black people are often worse off than white people due to their less natural intelligence. Despite being debunked by scholarly research, race science has made a comeback in recent years, with the alt-right use of false science to justify racial segregation. Welcome to yet another exciting video about black history. Here it highlights the historical existence of black people and their contribution to Western civilization. In today's video, we will renounce a claim made by racial scientists that black people are less intelligent. We will provide you with a list of 20 intelligent black persons whose IQs are higher than those of some well-known white scientists, together with information about their historical accomplishments and contributions to world civilization. High IQ is often seen as a sign of intelligence, but there is a disparity rooted in racism and white supremacy in who earns a genius-level IQ ranking. In 1998, Brookings reported that black people, particularly black Americans, consistently score lower than white Americans on standardized IQ tests. Although the gap has narrowed since 1970, the typical American black still scores below 75% of American whites on almost every standardized test. This test score gap has significant social and economic consequences. It is so advantageous when an individual is confirmed as possessing a high IQ. However, it's especially better if that someone is a black man or woman according to Forbes, particularly in cases where bigots utilize a supposedly low IQ to assert that black people are innately lower intelligent. The IQs of these 20 black men and women have demonstrated that they are not just intelligent, but in some cases much higher than those of Stephen Hawking, Albert Einstein, and Bill Gates. We honor these bright lights throughout the black community today. Let's get started. Number 20. Anala Beavers. Anala Beavers. A New Orleans native with an IQ over 145 at just five years old, has been a remarkable child. Her natural genius helped her learn the alphabet at just four months old, and by 18 months, she was reciting numbers in both Spanish and English. By her fifth birthday, she could recite the names of every North American state on the map and every capital. Her father, Landon Beavers, is concerned about Anala's limited local education choices and plans to provide her with as normal a childhood as a genius can have. Anala has been written about extensively, with her parents admitting that her smarts make her harder to deal with. She has publicly claimed she is smarter than her parents and even corrects their grammar. Anala is more aware, her mind works faster, and she always looks deeper into things, which means she challenges them a lot. Her arguments are valid, juvenile but intelligent. Beavers was recently invited to become one of 2,800 Mensa members under the age of 18, placing her intelligence in the top 1% of all humanity. Her parents say that Anala always has a new pursuit, and she is currently studying every book she can about volcanoes and astronomy, naming planets and dinosaurs. She is also on an artistic tip, doing a lot of creative things right now. In summary, Anala Beavers is a remarkable child, with an IQ of over 145 and a natural talent for learning. Her parents are working hard to maximize her potential and provide her with a normal childhood. Number 19, Kashi Quest, American Child Genius. Kashi Quest, 
who entered American Mensa at the age of two, is the organization's youngest member. Native American mother Sukjit Athwal, a Northern California child development specialist, and African American father Devin, a law clerk, gave birth to Quest in Los Angeles County, California. The Mensa test was given to Quest by a psychologist, who certified her as a genius after she scored 146, demonstrating that even at the age of 18 months, she could already communicate with advanced syntax and have conversations in full sentences. She learned Spanish and American Sign Language and can accurately name every state in the United States, every continent, every department of government, and every element on the periodic table. Number 18. Caleb Anderson. At the age of three, Caleb Anderson became the youngest male black American to be eligible for Mensa. It was discovered when Caleb was still a newborn that he had extensive knowledge and the capacity to evaluate and remember information. He started imitating his mother's speech at four weeks old. Even at such an early age, his understanding of intellect kept expanding. Then, at the age of three, he was admitted into Mensa, a non-profit group for individuals who achieve the 98th percentile on a monitored IQ intelligence test. Caleb is now exceptionally proficient in Mandarin, Spanish, French, Sign Language, and English. He could tell his teenage classmates did not accept him or value his exceptional ability when he was traveling to middle school. He nevertheless persisted in pursuing his dream since he was determined to disprove them all. After obtaining his high school graduation at the age of 11, he proceeded to Chattahoochee Technical College. There is nothing anyone can do to stop this well-rounded youngster from making history. He is already on his way. Age, race, and stereotype prejudice have all passed him by, but he should be aware that more is still to come. He can thus do it again if he can do it once. He is sharing his tale and will encourage a great deal of people to follow suit. Number 17. Ramarni Wilfred. Wilfred outperformed scientist Albert Einstein, Bill Gates and physicist Stephen Hawking at age 11, according to the BBC. The young pupil, who attends an East London comprehensive school, is regarded as a genius and the smartest boy in the capital of England after receiving an IQ score of 162. Wilfred has brilliance potential from a young age. He was ahead of other children in his age group in preschool, and by the time he was 10, he had written a paper on justice theory that had garnered significant praise from academics and drawn the interest of Mensa. Wilfred is still a typical boy his age, enjoying things like playing with his dog and reading comic books outside of school, even with his scholastic achievements. Number 16. Alana George. Dr. Peter Congdon, an educational psychologist, conducted an assessment on four-year-old Alana George, who was declared an intellectual genius with an IQ of 140. Alana taught herself to read, began writing whole phrases at the age of 18 months, and was pursuing her love of letters and numbers before she even went into the classroom. By the time she was three years old, she could read entire paragraphs from her favorite novels. Alana, at four years old, was the second youngest member of Mensa. Impressed, Dr. Congdon stated that he thought her score may have been higher. Congdon disclosed to the mirror. Something about Alana's abilities could be improved, so he wants to see her again in three years. It's necessary to change her curriculum so she doesn't become bored in class. The curriculum at St. George's School in Windsor Castle is being modified by Alana's teachers to better suit her academic level. Alana's reading comprehension was rated to match that of a seven-year-old, while her spelling and mental acuity were rated to match that of a six-and-a-half-year-old according to the results of the Wexler Preschool and Primary Scale of Intelligence Test. Number 15. Philip M. Aguali. Dr. Philip M. Aguali, known as the Bill Gates of Africa, was born in Nigeria in 1954. He dropped out of school at 14 due to his father's financial struggles, but his father continued to teach him at home. Growing up in a country devastated by civil war, M. Aguali believed his intellect could help him escape the fire, he received a scholarship to Oregon State University, where he earned a B.S. in mathematics and a Ph.D. in scientific computing from the University of Michigan. Emi Aguali's work was influenced by his study of nature, particularly bees. He saw the efficiency in bees' honeycomb construction and determined that computers that emulated this process could be the most powerful. 
1989, he invented the world's fastest computer, which performed 3.1 billion calculations per second. Eme Aguali's accomplishments include making oil fields more productive and saving the United States hundreds of millions of dollars annually. He also won the Gordon Bell Prize and the Nobel Prize for Computation, and his computers are currently used to forecast weather and predict future global warming. Number 14. George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver, born into slavery in 1864, is best known for his innovations in farming, soil restoration, and peanuts. After the Civil War, Carver and his brother James learned to read and write, and Carver focused on botany, earning him the nickname, the plant doctor. He enrolled in the botany program at Iowa State University and became the first African-American to earn a bachelor's and master's degree in science. Booker T. Washington offered him a prestigious position at Tuskegee University in Alabama, where he worked until he died in 1943. Carver's research led to the idea of crop rotation, which helps restore nitrogen in the soil after harvesting any single crop. He also proposed planting soybeans, peanuts, and sweet potatoes to add nutrients to the soil and create an abundance of food for landowners. Carver is also credited with the idea of permaculture, which uses carbon to improve crop growth and combat climate change. Carver was always a man for the people in addition to being one of the most significant black scientists who altered the course of history. He gave a museum and foundation in his honor his life savings, which came to roughly $60,000, almost $1 million in today's dollars. Number 13. Percy Julian. Percy Julian, a chemist known for his work on cortisone, steroids, and birth control, was born in Alabama due to discrimination. At 17, he applied to DePaul University in Indiana and graduated at the top of his class. He pursued his master's and doctorate at Harvard and the University of Vienna, where he developed a drug treatment for glaucoma. Despite his success, the university denied him the opportunity to become a professor due to his skin color. After leaving academia, Julian worked as a laboratory director for the Glidden Company, where he created Aero Foam, a soy-based foam used to extinguish oil and gas fires. Julian established Julian Laboratories in Illinois in 1954 and became one of the first black millionaires. He later created the Julian Research Institute, where he worked until his death from cancer in 1975. Julian was one of the most eminent black scientists in history. However, Few people are aware of his contributions. Number 12. May Carol Jemison. Along with six other astronauts, Dr. May Carol Jemison became the first black woman to travel in space as she launched into orbit on the Space Shuttle Endeavor. Born and raised in Decatur, Alabama, she was a standout student who won a National Achievement Scholarship at Stanford University. Moreover, she graduated from Cornell University Medical College and practiced medicine at the University of Southern California Medical Center. She decided to pursue her ambition of becoming an astronaut after working as a medical officer for the Peace Corps in Sierra Leone and Liberia. She was accepted as the first black woman into the astronaut program in 1987. She researched motion sickness and weightlessness while in space shuttle orbit. Subsequently, she had an appearance in a Star Trek The Next Generation episode. Presently, she serves as the principal of the 100-year Starship Organization, collaborating with NASA to facilitate interstellar space travel. Number 11. Katherine Johnson. Katherine Johnson, a prominent mathematician, was one of the first black women to work as a NASA scientist. She began her career at West Virginia State College, where she became the first black student in 1939. After leaving the university to start a family, she worked for the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics in 1953, later becoming NASA. Johnson worked as a computer in the West Area Computing Unit before the advent of Microsoft or Apple machines. During the space race, she joined NASA's Space Task Group, where she co-authored an engineering paper and participated in mission debriefings. She contributed to the calculations for Freedom 7, the first U.S. human spaceflight, and Friendship 7, allowing Alan B. Shepard Jr. and John Glenn to safely visit space. Johnson also worked on other missions, including Apollo 11 and Apollo 13. Johnson retired from NASA in 1986, and 2015, President Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. NASA named a computational research facility, a satellite, 
and a spacecraft in her honor. Johnson passed away in 2020 at 101, leaving a lasting legacy as one of the most intelligent black scientists and females who changed history. Number 10. Gladys West. Gladys West, a prominent mathematician, is best known for her role in developing the Global Positioning System (GPS). Despite facing discrimination and sexism in her community, West pursued her education and earned her bachelor's and master's degrees in mathematics. In 1956, she was hired by the U.S. Naval Proving Ground as a mathematician, alongside her future husband, Ira V. West. During her tenure, West solved math problems manually and programmed computers to do it for her. She worked on projects related to Pluto and Neptune, acted as project manager for a U.S. Navy ocean surveillance satellite, and helped create a GPS service. West is considered a hidden figure and one of the most regarded black scientists of all time, often overlooked due to her race and gender. She also earned a master's and doctoral degree in public administration and has been awarded numerous awards, including the Prince Philip Medal, HBCU Digest's Female Alumna of the Year, and an induction into the U.S. Air Force Hall of Fame. Number 9. Marie M. Daly. Marie Maynard Daly, born in 1921 in New York City, was a renowned scientist who grew up in a family that valued education. Her father, who studied chemistry at Cornell University, never completed his degree due to financial difficulties. Daly hoped to follow in his footsteps and pursue a college degree in chemistry. She graduated from Hunter College High School and continued her education at Queens College. In 1942, she graduated with honors and worked as a lab assistant before continuing her studies at New York University and Columbia University. In 1947, she became the first black American woman to earn a PhD in chemistry. Daly worked as a biochemist, studying cholesterol and histones, which helped understand DNA organization. She also served as a college professor and worked to bring more non-white students into science fields. Daly started a scholarship in memory of her father at Queens College. She passed away on October 28, 2003. Number 8. Edward Boucher, Edward Alexander. Boucher, born on September 15, 1852, in New Haven, Connecticut, was an outstanding student and valedictorian of his high school class. His family, prominent in New Haven's African-American community, hoped their son would join the Yale College student body, which no African-American had ever attended. When he was admitted in 1870, Edward Boucher became the first to break the color line at Yale College. Boucher took classes in mechanics, physics, and astronomy, earning a GPA of 3.36 in his first year. He excelled in mathematics with a grade point average of 3.52 and received summa cum laude honors in all undergraduate studies upon graduation in 1874. He was the first African-American elected into the Academic Honor Society, Phi Beta Kappa, but his induction was delayed due to Yale's inactivity for several years. Boucher entered graduate school at Yale in 1874 and gained his doctorate in physics in just two years, 1876. Although he was the first African-American to earn a PhD from an institution in the United States, he was not the first African-American to receive this terminal degree. Patrick Francis Healy had previously earned his PhD in 1865 from the University of Louvain. At Yale, Boucher studied with some of the most outstanding professors in science becoming one of only six people in the country with doctorates in physics when he completed his doctoral dissertation on measuring refractive indices. Despite his credentials and academic accomplishments, racism was a formidable roadblock to a career as a research scientist. Boucher spent most of his career teaching and administrating segregated African-American schools. Number seven, Annie J. Easley. Annie J. Easley, born in 1933 in Birmingham, Alabama, was a renowned mathematician who fought against discrimination in the STEM field. Born to Samuel and Mary Easley, she initially pursued a career in nursing before switching to pharmacy. After completing her studies at Xavier University in New Orleans, she returned to Birmingham and worked as a substitute teacher in Jefferson County, Alabama. Easley also helped prepare literacy tests for voter registration, which were designed to exclude African Americans from voting. In 1954, Easley moved to Cleveland, Ohio, where she read an article about twin sisters working as human computers at the Aircraft Engine Research Laboratory, 
which later became the National Aeronautics and Space Agency, NASA. She applied and began her 34-year career with NASA as a computer scientist and mathematician. Her work ethic and graduation from high school made her adept at mastering complex equations. When NASA was created in 1958, Easley was one of only four African-American employees in the computational section. She played a crucial role in space research and missions, including the launch of astronaut John Glenn in 1962. Easley's talents were utilized in the Computer Services Division, where she ran simulations for the Plum Brook Reactor Facility. During the 1960s, Easley worked on nuclear-powered rocket systems, including the Centaur High Energy Booster Rocket. As technology advanced, she learned computer programming languages like Fortran and SOAP. In 1977, she completed a mathematics degree from Cleveland State University while working full-time. Easley also worked as an equal employment opportunity counselor, addressing race, gender, and age discrimination complaints from NASA employees. Easley passed away in 2011, but her legacy continues to inspire students to make an impact in the STEM field. Number 6. Walter Lincoln Hawkins, American chemist and engineer. Walter Lincoln Hawkins is recognized as a pioneer in the field of polymer chemistry. He spent 34 years at Bell Laboratories, where he played a key role in the development of durable plastic to sheath telephone wires that allowed thousands of Americans, particularly those living in rural areas, to access telephone services. Hawkins is renowned for his groundbreaking studies, as well as his efforts to support minority pupils. In 1973, he was also Montclair State University's chairman. Among his numerous honors are the National Medal of Technology, which then U.S. President George H.W. Bush gave to Hawkins just before he passed away in 1992, and the distinction of being the first African-American elected to the National Academy of Engineering, 1975. Number 5. Alexa Kennedy. Alexa Kennedy, born in 1950 in Lansing, Michigan, was the first female African-American neurosurgeon in the United States and the first female African-American to be certified by the American Board of Neurological Surgery. She specialized in pediatric neurosurgery and became the director of neurosurgery at the Children's Hospital, which was viewed as one of the best in the country. Kennedy graduated from the University of Michigan in 1971 with a degree in zoology and fell in love with medicine during her undergraduate studies. She later graduated cum laude from the College of Medicine at the University of Michigan and began her residency in neurosurgery at the University of Minnesota. After a fellowship in pediatric neurosurgery at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, she returned to Michigan and joined the neurosurgery department at Detroit's Henry Ford Hospital. At age 36, she became the chief of neurosurgery at Children's Hospital of Michigan, where she cared for young patients facing life-threatening illnesses gunshot wounds, head trauma, hydrocephaly, brain tumors, and spine abnormalities. After years as a successful neurosurgeon, Kennedy retired from her position in 2001 and relocated to Florida with her husband. She later practiced part-time at Pensacola's Sacred Heart Hospital. Kennedy officially retired from practicing medicine a second time in 2012. Number four, Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker, one of the first African Americans to achieve prominence in science, learned arithmetic and astronomy primarily on his own. Banneker saw astronomical patterns in the night sky in addition to stars. To precisely forecast a solar eclipse in 1789, he used mathematics to analyze the motion of constellations, such as those on the MUVA constellation globe, shown below. In addition, Banneker advocated for equality. In a 1791 letter to Thomas Jefferson, the Secretary of State at the time, he questioned the slave owner's claim to be a friend of liberty and urged him to give up any misconceptions about the superiority of one race over another. Banneker was later sent by Jefferson to the surveying team that created a map of Washington, D.C. Number 3. Charles R. Drew. Charles R. Drew, a prominent surgeon and African-American scientist, is known for creating the blood bank, being the first director of the American Red Cross, and being the first black man to earn a doctorate from Columbia University. Born in Washington, D.C., Drew earned an athletic scholarship and later became a biology professor and football coach at Morgan College. He attended McGill University in Canada, 
where he graduated top of his class and received awards for his work in transfusion medicine. In 1938, he trained at Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, where he developed a method for long-term storage of blood plasma. This was crucial during World War II, as soldiers needed blood. Drew became the first director of the American Red Cross but left after two years due to racial segregation. In 1950, he died in a car accident, and rumors about his death, including being refused a blood transfusion by a white doctor, have been proven false. Number 2. Daniel Hale Williams Daniel Hale Williams, a prominent surgeon, is best known for performing one of the first successful open-heart surgeries and opening the first interracial hospital. He worked as a shoemaker's apprentice and barber before pursuing his passion for helping people. After graduating from Chicago Medical College, Williams opened Provident Hospital in 1891, the first interracial hospital in the U.S. The hospital treated black patients and served as a training institute for black physicians and nurses. Williams performed an open-heart surgery on a patient who survived for two decades. In 1894, he was appointed chief surgeon of the Freedmen's Hospital in Washington, D.C., where he helped rebuild the hospital and added services like an ambulance and training for black medical students. Williams worked for various hospitals in Chicago until he suffered a stroke in 1926 and died five years later in Idlewild, Michigan. Number 1. Lonnie Johnson Lonnie Johnson, a NASA engineer and inventor, is credited with creating popular toys like Nerf guns and super soakers. His father, a military truck driver, taught him about electrical currents and household appliance repair, sparking his interest in building and creating things. Johnson spent his teenage years tinkering with mechanics and small engines, even building a robot called Linux for a fair at the University of Alabama. Despite winning first place, the University of Alabama overlooked him, so he attended Tuskegee University on a scholarship, earning a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and a master's degree in nuclear engineering. After college, Johnson joined the U.S. Air Force and worked for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, helping the Galileo mission reach Jupiter and the Cassini mission reach Saturn. In 1989, he designed the Super Soaker Squirt Gun, which generated $200 million in sales. Johnson has several patents and is currently a member of the nonprofit 100 Black Men of Atlanta and the Georgia Alliance for Children, making him one of the most influential African-American scientists. Despite being marginalized, turned down for employment, and denied credit for their discoveries, black intellect has long been involved in significant scientific advancements, from the creation of the global positioning system to the first leprosy therapy. For many years, African-American scientists had to overcome more difficult obstacles to obtain a scientific degree, and they frequently got little or no recognition for their achievements and discoveries. They have given America everything, including their lives, yet, Systemic racism and prejudice have impeded prompt and justifiable acknowledgement. If you enjoyed this video and want more videos on Black JC people's history Global, and their contribution to Embassy Western civilization, TV One. kindly hit the like and subscribe button.